All right, movie and TV news time here on Lights, Camera, Barstool. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, a big help to us. We know people watch, but I'm not sure everyone subscribed. Subscribe. Uh, big help and like the video as well. Even if you don't like the news, like the video. Throw Who a likes like the if, news. Throw a like if you hate the news. Well, what, I mean, the news may not be. There's some bad news in this episode. Uh, talking movie news. Uh, date week of September 11, 2023. Uh, it's our Monday news. Uh, let's start out with Aquaman 2. An unbelievable cinematic experience happening right now with uh, Warner Discovery and people DC. People are talking about it. For TV, You say people are talking about it? Yeah, us. Zaslav's playing 3D checkers it, right it's now. It's us and five other people. <laughs> did, did you, did, so we tweeted out the tease to the trailer. The trailer for Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom, the second Aquaman movie, comes out the first trailer comes out uh this upcoming thursday september 14th i'd assume maybe tied to football maybe maybe not um james wan back directing this movie uh this movie has gone through some delays some changes a bunch of bullshit rumors of different batman involved five, with it. five different endings that they re-shot. yeah they, they've, they've reshot the movie a hundred different fucking ways. I don't even remember. Wasn't Michael Keaton supposed to be in it? Maybe. And maybe Ben Affleck. There's just. I remember them talking about that a while ago. So many things that you, you lose track at this point. Yeah, Zero so can- trailers. The first trailer is going to debut with 97 days until release. Basically an admitted failure. Exactly. I, I'm not saying our movie Twitter account is the end all be all for success. But when we drop a DC Star Wars or Marvel trailer and it doesn't get any pub. That's usually a bad sign. Uh, when we drop something that has some hype, the trailer goes pretty, pretty wide. A couple thousand retweets, bunch of views. We posted the tease. It's just the tease. It's not the trailer for the Aquaman thing. We got five retweets. Not like to 14 mention 14 replies. <laughs> this is like a sequel to one of like the 20 Second. highest grossing movies of all time. Billion dollar movie. Yeah. yeah, I made like one point two billion dollars. Like, so this isn't just some like random sequel to a random like. Yeah, DC this is movie. yeah. This is their biggest, I think. Right. This is not like Aquaman's friend part two. Like, it's not like mm-hmm. his, but it's fucking Aquaman. It's so. It, this is part of the whole DC thing where they've had issues with you know confused confusion over what's involved in the future universe, who's sticking around, who's not. There's rumors that Momoa is going to be a completely different character. <laughs> In the upcoming DC Cinematic Universe, uh, I don't know. We don't see a ton in the trailer. You see Patrick Wilson's character, um, World Eater, Ocean Master, Ocean Master, Ocean Master. Yeah, he, he returns. He's like, I guess, imprisoned or something after the last movie. You see uh, what I assume is going to be the main uh, antagonist, Black Manta, played by Yahya Abdul Mateen, who we saw in the last movie. Uh, but you'll see the full trailer on Thursday. Less than 100 days to release is fucking insanity to get a first trailer. It, it, you may like you may as well. I saw somebody tweet like James Gunn's going to rub magnets on the on the DC sir on the Warner servers. And the movie gets lost. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even know at this point. I don't even know. Did we even get a picture uh, like a, even a screen of Amber Heard in this? I'm just rewatching it right now because I don't remember. Seeing no, it. She apparently. Good. Still in the movie, or so they say. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I, I remember seeing it the first time I watched. I'm rewatching now. I don't see her at all. Man, this looks bad. Just looking at the fucking CGI, just another disaster. Yeah, so no Amber Heard in that commercial, which is probably smart. And presuming they would not have her very heavily featured in the actual trailer either. Um, this is gonna be like I feel like it's this is the last one of the remnants of old DC, Who and that, until knows. we get uh, Fwa Adu. Uh, which isn't part of that DCEU uh, section anyway. Right, which, I mean, I'm sure they're they're so happy that the Batman and Joker yes. have, have avoided any association with the DC universe because now they can just kind of move on and not have that be a discourse around it. Exactly. So this will be, uh, this is the death rattle of the DCEU as we used to know it before we get into, like, uh, again, some of the other stuff that we already like, as it, like with Joker 2. Or um uh and when James Gunn resets it, but like this is just it's such a bummer, right? It's like we're gonna have to watch this shit. It's gonna be terrible. It's gonna be awful. It's gonna be a big CGI fucking disaster. Um, and we're just gonna have to sit through it and watch it, and that sucks. That sucks for us, and it sucks for moviegoers too. 
And I guess also Jason Momoa. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I really don't know. I. What do they do with this movie? Like, are they really going to release this movie? It's, in it's the very clearly a punt. Like, that's just what exactly. it is. Like they, they're just fucking, they're just punting, which is so crazy. Yesterday, what- yeah. So yesterday they were getting clowned on, like, because it was officially 100 days until release. And they were getting clowned on all morning. Like, several tweets I saw had gone viral, yeah. like, making fun of the fact that we hadn't seen anything from this fucking movie. H- and how do you not just release it on the 100 days left? Uh, like, it, it was, like Jesus Christ, even do that, like, 100 days till Aquaman 2. Exactly. Trailer, I'm, Sunday Night Football. Now. I'm fairly certain they saw the online discourse happening, and they just threw to something together really quick. And I And released that. it last night at, like, because it was released at, like, a random time. Like, not, it, I don't think it was planned, is what I'm saying. Um, well, I mean, that, like, I know that sounds kind of crazy. It's like a what, like, I think in the past people were like, oh, did the internet really impact that? But after, like, Sonic, and then remember when Spider Man's trailer released because it leaked online? Like, it's not a crazy thought. Like, they made just their hand might have been forced. Yeah. And so, but before they'd even dropped anything, there was a little part of me that was thinking, are they going to pull this from theaters and just punt on the marketing and just put it on Max and just say, we're not going to lose money on marketing? We're not going to lose money dropping this in theaters. We're just going to take the loss of what we put into the movie and move on. Because I think releasing this movie in theaters is way more harmful to to Warner Brothers than any kind of financial loss. Like they need to move on. They need to get away sure. from this shit. And dropping this shit in theaters, dropping the Flash in theaters, like this is hurting whatever James Gunn is going to have cooking up in the future. Because there's going to be a stink for years to come if this movie is as bad as mm-hmm. what, what people are saying. And it feels like Warner Brothers is leaking to the press that it's bad. I'm not sure if that's what's actually happening, but it does feel that way. So if it's that bad, like this is going to be a stink that carries over for so long. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking at some of those early um, leaks from the test screenings and everything. People walked out of it. People said it's going to be one <laughs> of the never good. Yeah, we want out of the test screening out of the is test never a good screen. sign. They said it's unwatchable. They said it's potentially one of the worst DC movies. Uh, and it's, it's, and again, this is over consistently over the course of half a year. People have been saying this, and they still haven't been able to fix it. Uh, Jesus, dude, this is just rough. I hear it's terrible, and that's why Momo is going to be Lobo moving forward. Uh, sure, uh, he'd be perfect for Lobo. For all yeah. fairness, and Lobo's a cool character and very much a James Gunn character. I'd love to see it, but then we go we go back to the confusion of you right. just released a fucking Aquaman movie in theaters, and then you're going to recast him two years later, and I'm presumably well, they could give in him more Superman, break, right? Hmm? You can give him more of a break, right? Or does he have to be in Legacy? He would likely be in. I mean, Lobo is a Superman character, unless like an early. Yeah, I mean, villain? you can. He's kind of kind of a villain. He's more of an antihero more than anything. Um, he's badass as hell, but I mean, then it's like, then you have the, you go back to just everything is so fucking confusing with this goddamn universe. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. Yeah. And it's frustrating because DC, I truly do believe has better characters and better stories than what Marvel has to work with. And they just cannot fucking stop shooting themselves in the goddamn foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's most insane about this though. I think it's, it's, it's very clearly the fact that. This is a studio that has had multiple bombs this year. He's on a horrible streak with their movies. The Flash, Blue Beetle, which wasn't even bad. It just didn't do well. And it's like for them to just have this property, which its previous iteration was incredible in terms of box office success. They just shit themselves. <laughs> it's like <laughs> and almost intentionally. It's crazy. That's what it, it feels very intentional. Yeah. Mm hmm. Like, maybe they want to make this thing so bad. It's like they're doing like a uh, what do you call it? Like a crystal Pepsi where it's like, get you know what talking. I mean? Get people pissed off. And then when you bring back new Pepsi, everyone's going to or old Pepsi. Everyone's going to be like, yeah, nice. Pepsi's back. Like, <laughs> yeah, hopefully you know the mean? first show oh, like, oh, is just all hand uh, new new or whatever. The, the, yeah. the, the correct beverage reference is new Coke. Yeah, new no, Coke. That's, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that would be incredible if that's what they're doing. They're doing the new. Coke. And if that's not what they're doing, they should take your idea. That should be what they say. That should be the yeah. company line. Like, oh, we did that to get your attention. Yeah. And then brought back old Coke. <laughs> yeah. 
Although technically, I guess Gunn would be new. I don't know. Now we're going to bring back old Lex Luthor. Kevin Spacey, yeah. everybody. No, it's not what we meant. No. <laughs> Kevin Spacey and John Cryer. <laughs> um, tough. Aquaman 2. We'll talk about the trailer when it comes out. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's next movie, apparently his last, though. Uh, yeah, come on. I, I believe don't know. It. Come on, Quint. I, I don't want I think part of it is I don't want to believe it. Like, I'm not calling him a liar. I just hope he is a liar. I hope he's a liar. Mm-hmm. But he says it's his last movie. Apparently, the lead role for this movie is being targeted, um, or the target for it is someone we've had on the pod, friend of Barstow, Paul Walter Hauser. Hell yeah. Which is uh, very unexpected. Kind of shocked when I saw that news. Uh, the movie is, uh, the movie critic to me about a real, by the way, if, if you said, who is making a movie based on a real life critic they read in a porn magazine? Every 100 out of 100 <laughs> people would say it's Quentin Tarantino. Exactly. Uh, that's the premise. Paul Walter, Haus- Paul Walter Hauser has had some incredible side roles, supporting roles. Uh, talking about uh, I, Tanya is probably the one that sticks out the most. Black Klansman. Um, he had a lead in the Richard Jewell movie from. Very good, too. He's excellent. Um, he's very good in the role uh, from Clint Eastwood. Um, he Black was very Bird. fun in Cruella. I think you should leave. Yes. Uh, I'll never get my lines out as fast as Jamie fucking, Taco. Fucking Jamie Taco. Um, but now apparently up for this lead role, which again, he was a, he was a lead in the Richard Jewell movie. This is a whole different ball of wax. This oh, is yeah. like, this, this, this is not like whatever a Clint Eastwood movie is, which Clint Eastwood obviously a legend, but like playing for a Tarantino movie, his last movie, this is like beyond the big leagues. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this is, this is I a mean, big fucking deal. So this is one of the biggest roles of like life, the past of, decade. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. Can you think of a bigger role beyond role outside of, of like, outside of like superhero characters that you get cast as like this is yeah i mean he'd be a household name it'd be like being in if like scorsese no, not like i don't want to say like winter two and scorsese you're like same level dudes but like if scorsese was like this is my last movie i'm ever doing then the lead role in that would be like that similar sort of name yeah i mean he is one of the few like there are very few directors in hollywood who where the name carries the weight of what they do mm. tarantino scorsese Spielberg maybe to an extent but even Spielberg it's like it depends what he makes like obviously the West Side Story that came out in the COVID era but like you know Spielberg will still get heads turning but Spielberg pumps them out maybe more at like a higher clip than like a Tarantino for example uh, I think in terms of new directors Jordan Peele has begun to enter that realm where like it's a Peele movie Nolan obviously but there's not many you know when you come out with 200 movies a year and you can name like five directors who at any given time, don't release those. Like even like a Fincher and Denny, like David Fincher, like yeah, he turns heads, but is he like the household mainstream? No, not like what Nolan oh. is. Same with Denny Villeneuve, definitely not. I, I mean, Denny Villeneuve, incredible director, but movies don't typically make that much money. So obviously, Tarantino is up there, probably one A, one B with uh, maybe one A, one B, one C with Scorsese and Nolan. Christopher Nolan. Yeah. Again, like it's weird to not say Spielberg, but I do think. Some of his recent stuff, it's like he comes, it, it's the post and like Ready Player One did well, but like it's not like those, like name alone. Like I, I don't want to make that sound like that's a knock on Steven Spielberg, who's literally like literally on the Mount Rushmore of directors, but you get my point. Um, this would be cool. I didn't believe it when I first, I thought I was getting fucked with on the timeline when I first <laughs> thought, like nothing against Paul Walter Hauser, it's just like he is not the big name you that you would typically like associate. Nero, right? Yes. With like this massive of a role, but then once you, I think when we interviewed him too, he was like, "I'm just happy to get work." You know, he's yeah. like, "What?" I, like that's you know, he's he is a very down to earth. And by the way, I was looking at his Instagram the other day. He has your your calves, Jeff. He has he has your build <laughs> legs legs wise. It's very funny. Um, Zero workout. He, he uh, but once you dig down into like what Tarantino has said about this role and this character, he is a perfect fit. It's like this. This guy who's a little abrasive in the seventies, uh, reviewing like he like he said, reviewing movies in a porno mag that Tarantino, of course, found. Um, alcoholic who is says some off color stuff. Like I do think this is a perfect fit. Mm-hmm. And Tarantino said a million times he doesn't. He wants an American. He wants someone in their thirties. Like this is this could be huge. And I'm excited for this movie. Anytime you get Tarantino talking movies, good to go. Yeah, I, I, Paul Walter Hauser is sneakily very great. Like, not even just um, in all like the stuff people feel like more known from like the more popular movies, but obviously like he crushed Richard Jewell 
found like a multiple mm-hmm. layer standpoint and that character i think is very similar in a lot of ways to the way he's describing this character mm-hmm. kind of like this loner kind of weirdo guy that people believe but don't believe you know things like that uh and also again like blackbird he was excellent as yeah. and so fucking creepy in and uh i think he's an, an awesome actor really? and i tr- will always trust carantino because like what when has a tarantino actor put in a, a poor performance like I, you, I can yeah. never think of a role where I was like, "Wow, Tarantino fucked this up. This is a miscast," or "Wow, this guy fucked up in this performance." Like it, oh, every single guy and girl in a Tarantino movie gets a one hundred out of one hundred performance in any movie he's in. If you like the movie or not, that's a different story. But performances are never a problem. Yeah, uh, his casting director is typically I think Victoria Thomas. Looking that up earlier. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if she's casted all of them, but point being. If you're casting that movie, like I think there's pretty good fucking reason for it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully he gets cast. Hopefully we get to talk to him too after he gets cast. Uh, Godzilla, Monarch, Legacy of Mo- it's not called Godzilla Monarch. Like Le- uh, so, Godzilla dot 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 Monarch Legacy of Monsters. That's the name of the of the series hitting Apple TV Plus. Uh, set after the battle between Godzilla and the Titans in the most recent movie, uh, Godzilla vs Kong. Uh, Revealing that monsters are real follows one family's journey to uncover its buried secrets and a legacy linking them to Monarch. That is the company that obviously deals with these these monsters and kaijus and all that. Uh, Kurt and Wyatt Russell playing the same character, uh, father and son. Kurt obviously playing the more present day, at least recently present day character. I don't know exactly when it's going to be set year wise. Wyatt Russell playing the younger version of him. Trailer look cool. Big budget. A lot of money involved with that show. And Apple TV Plus carries some weight at this point. I think even if you, you know, putting aside like, I don't like the morning show. Some people like to see the Jason Momoa show. Oh, I don't like see. I watch the morning show because I have like a connection to it. But outside of that, like for the most part, their tracker for Apple TV Plus is pretty good. And the trailer, it looked like a movie. It looked like a full scale, big budget movie. So looks pretty badass to get Godzilla stuff as a series is going to be very interesting. Yeah. Also, Anders Holm is playing John Goodman younger. Which is just funny too, because you have like basically an exact look <laughs> really? between Kurt and Wyatt Russell and then Anders home playing John Goodman when he was <laughs> younger. It's just hysterical. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, like the like you said, the sets look awesome, production design looks awesome. They have the money to throw behind uh these sort of projects, which is great. Um, good cast, cool kind of concept. And like Godzilla, like like the Godzilla or Monsters universe and everything like that, I feel like there's there there's like another step, another level for them to hit that they haven't hit. And I really want to see them get there. And hopefully this is it. Uh, it's written by a, f- a couple people. Chris Black stands out because he just did Severance. Oh, uh, he wrote Severance. And he also wrote uh, Invincible um, oh. and helped adapt that. So, I mean, two very great recent projects, one of which for Apple TV Plus. Um, so very excited to see this. Um, I'm pumped up to watch some kaiju action with with the Russell guys, the Russell family. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it does feel like there's another level for this franchise to hit at least the legacy i think is yeah legacy yeah. uh production company's version of it and it feels like they've been trying to get there and failing and it's really hurt the movies because of that because the movies i feel like they have been trying to be more story dependent versus just watch these monsters go at each other and destroy shit but maybe in a series length you can actually yes. make that work Whereas the movie just, you kind of get a jumbled mess. This will actually give you time to breathe and develop those storylines and make you actually fucking care about the characters. I'm hoping this works out. I fucking love kaijus. I don't know how you can't look at big lizards and big, you know, moths and apes. Yeah, apes and not be like entertained just on a popcorn level. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I do think this this opens the door for like, uh, something interesting, something new outside of the, you know, the Conjuring universe, the Marvel universe, the DC universe, a monster universe would be awesome. Something, a dependable one. Right? Yes, Like a dependable exactly. monsters universe. Yes. Yeah. Be huge. And what was the, what, what was the name of the universe that we were almost had with the dark universe dark universe that's what i, was, I, I like still think that could have ended up being good i mean the cast was crazy <laughs> that, that, that cast picture again granted all those people were in different locations when they took that cast picture was fucking crazy actually like, you remember Tom, you remember who was in that photo randomly sophia sophia butella she was <laughs> rebel mood she, she was, was she, no, was, she so, wasn't she wasn't random she, she was, was the fucking the mummy. mummy yeah i mean well you know what i mean 
I mean, it was Tom Cruise, Javier Bardem. It was uh, Johnny Depp. <laughs> Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Sophia Batella. Russell Crowe, Sophia Batella. I feel like we're even. Yeah, Russell so. Crowe. Yeah, they were photoshopped. He's in that fucking picture. Doctor Hyde. How do, how do they? How do they do Russell Crowe in the Mummy again? Is, is like who's Doctor Hyde or something? Right? Yeah, it's it's like, but like how it was like so. It wasn't this on the nose, but it was like thank you, miss, thank you, uh, Mister Jekyll. Jekyll, and then he'd yeah, be like, yeah. or maybe I'm Mister Hyde. Yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah. It was that like it was so fucking stupid. It was oh. in like a, it was in like one of those like classic that t- that era of of universes where. He was in a room of things like that. That's yeah. always how they they showed it was connected. Like, oh my god, there's there's fucking uh, I don't know, there's vampires' balls in a jar or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, just some bullshit like it's that. It's just like all these like weird glass like jars full of shit. Um, oh, yeah, I'm excited for this. Mummy? I I liked King of the Monsters. I know some people thought it was a little too um story based not action enough and i think if you thought that i i, I do think godzilla's kong made up for that where it's just yeah yeah just beating the piss out of each other over and over i think the people behind these movies like i even like the first godzilla i know it gets shit for not a lot of godzilla but i think for what they ended up being maybe against what expectations were i do think they were good uh so i think i i have high hopes for this uh first trailer for the movie uh the bike riders uh, from Jeff Nichols, uh, who has done a bunch of movies, one of them being Mud, by the way, which is a fucking fantastic Love movie. Mud. Uh, Mud with Matthew McConaughey is awesome. Um, but this movie, The Bike Riders with Austin Butler. Uh, the question remains, uh, does he sound like Elvis and everything he does? Uh, I'm very excited to see what he sounds like in Dune Part 2, which we have to wait even longer now. Uh, Jody Comer, Tom Hardy, uh, Michael Shannon, who is a collaborator with with Jeff Nichols and a bunch of his stuff. Uh, uh, Midnight Special. Midnight Spen- yeah, that was awesome, that movie. Uh, Norman Reedus, Boyd Holbrook, great cast. Uh, long premise. Kathy, a strong will member of the Vandals, who is married uh, to a wild, reckless bike rider named Benny, uh, played by Austin Butler. Jody Comer, uh, Kathy, by the way, recounts the Vandals evolution over the course of a decade beginning as a local club of outsiders united by good times rumbling bikes and respect for their strong steady leader johnny uh thoughts on the trailer hits theaters december 1st i thought it looked cool um i mean you have four dudes right that all of which play really good 60s actors butler Elvis, uh hardy and legend legend is like not oh, a great yeah. movie i liked hardy i liked hardy though a lot in it uh feist from west side story uh Holbrook and in Indy Five I thought was really good. Uh and Jody Comer. I mean, she's like one of the better actresses working right yeah. now. So you throw all that together with Jeff Nichols, and Jeff Nichols, I think, has made some very underappreciated movies like we were just mentioning Mud and uh Midnight Special. Uh yeah. And I think we got a really like, cool recipe for success. Plus, bikers are very underrepresented, considering how like interesting that culture is, it's very underrepresented in film. Like obviously, Sons of Anarchy was very like, like I'm not gonna say the biggest show on earth or anything like that, but people really resonated and like liked it and enjoyed it while it was on. And I feel like we don't get enough representation of that world on film. So I'm very excited to watch this. Yeah, it's basically like modern cowboys. Yeah, yeah. and I like, got nothing really on movies. Yeah, you're you're right. We really have not had a ton. Um, I thought the trailer looked very cool. Um, I understand a lot of this was filmed <laughs> northern Kentucky, Cincinnati. So I will have a bias for this movie and push for best picture awards. <laughs> um. Austin Butler looks great. I mean, Austin Butler just looks the part. Like it is, yeah. it is a perfect fit there. I am a little worried with the accents. Um, the Tom Hardy accent was. These are all great actors. Don't get me wrong. The decision to cast non-American actors to play do a Chicago accent not the easiest one. Not the easiest one to do. I think for an outsider coming in is interesting. Uh, Tom Hardy, yeah, did not sound great. I do think he at some point we have to have the conversation about his voices. They just, they're just kind of jarring and take you out of the movie sometimes. Um, but outside of that, I do think it looks very cool. Um, I love the first poster, by the way. That poster, mm, that's rock. sick poster. That's like the little text they added in. It looks great. We don't get enough. Uh, speaking of posters, the Killers of the Flower Moon posters are fucking terrible. Yeah. So it was, <laughs> it was nice to see it. Like it just, I didn't see, I didn't see it. That's a shame. You can't be giving Marty bad posters. Oh, they've, they've dropped like three and yeah, they've all bad been bad. Bad poster, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Looks like something from the early 2000s. Yeah, it's a pretty bad fucking poster. Yeah, I don't like that. A very departed poster. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think I think this looks this looks pretty good. I, I I will use this again as a time to say watch Mud if you have not watched Mud. It got praise when it came out, so I'm not saying Mud's like a thing that we discovered. This um, knucklehead scratched my scratched my Harley. We're gonna have a some midnight special. <laughs> Might just be what he sounds like. I also, mean, uh, Lincoln Lawyer with Matthew McConaughey has nothing to do with Jeff Nichols, but love a good Lincoln. Lincoln Lawyer is aggressively a TNT movie. Yeah, very I, much so. I like that movie. They have the show now too. Though. People like the show too. Yeah. People seem to like the show. Yeah, it was streamed uh, for uh, two billion minutes on on Netflix. Yeah, I'm sure. Also, check out more. Suits on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, fucking Christ. Um, lastly, oh, you see your your boy. One of them ended up on Royal Match. Uh, one of the two Suits suit men. I don't, not Lewis one, one of the Lewis most famous of, Royal Matches was Lewis Litt. Yeah, not Lewis Litt. One of the two main suit men was uh, Harvey. Up. Was it Harvey? Mike or Harvey? Or was, uh, the the <laughs> slightly nerdier looking one. <laughs> yeah, that's Mike. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about the other one looks magic. like Sean McVay, which I didn't realize till yesterday when when Sean McVay arrived for the Rams game and he was in his three piece suit. I'm like, oh, that's just fucking Harvey Specter. It's very similar <laughs> vibes. Uh, the beard is the only thing that separates them. Uh, PR firm Bunker 15, which sounds like a really bad movie. It sounds like a bad like Dolph Lundgren, Sylvester Stallone movie. Bunker 15 uh, mm. was caught paying critics on average of $50 per review, which is such a funny number. I don't know why. Like 100 bucks to be like, I got that. But like 50 bucks, that's like one DoorDash meal in New York City uh, per review to rig Rotten Tomatoes scores. This is not shocking whatsoever. Not even a little bit. Listen, should, should have offered them a Barstool store gift card. Uh, listen, uh, the rent is expensive and I needed that money. <laughs> Dude, it's fucking... It's it just, I mean, I feel like this has to be happening, not just with them, but like a whole bunch of different PR firms, too. Oh, absolutely. Like, it, it, absolutely. oh, yeah. Absolutely. Just tip of the iceberg, I'm sure. And I mean, this story did blow up somewhat, but I think it could go even larger. Um, this could fucking put Rotten Tomatoes in the dirt. Mm -hmm. People already were ready to call them out and say that it was rigged. And now there's legal evidence of them being Which rigged because like, they can't control that element of it but i guess the best they could do is ban whoever accepts those bribes for life from reviewing on rotten tomatoes that's yeah. basically it i mean that's all you can do and you'll forever just be because it's like people don't think through like the yeah. actual business structure of like oh there's a critic that gets paid by a different studio and then yeah. they just enter it into rotten tomatoes rotten tomatoes isn't paying them what people are going to hear <laughs> is just like oh rotten tomatoes is getting paid to jack these scores right. up exactly yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. what people are gonna hear yeah people are gonna go back to imdb it should be like they should have like a big banner at mm -hmm. around tomatoes like with like almost like you know how, like they'll have the shoplifters put it up on like a store on like a store's front entrance yeah like hey caught the shoplifter like all the reviewers that accepted money right on the top I it, it, I it explains a lot i will say that there's some scores i've seen over the years that i'm just like what the then fuck one, two yeah, I mean, there there's plenty of scores over the years. If you're like, what on earth? How is that? Yeah, a thing. Why didn't fucking uh, out of all movies? Why didn't Gotti get in on this trend? Well, they could. I mean, Gotti, that's a Gotti. <laughs> they were paying. They they're, were, they I were know pay they're paying the audience they two, yeah. they, They're they're like you know like in a video game and you have to use like credits or fake money in the game and then you use all your allotment on accident. That's what mm. Gotti did. They were like, all right, now time for the critics. Like we used all of our money on the audience. Yeah, all Starts of our bribe money went to the audience. <laughs> to, went to bots from Bangladesh Shit. jacking up our <laughs> our fucking reviews. Jesus, don't um, trust the critics. Gotti was right. Yeah, Gotti was correct. Yeah, yeah, that's the takeaway here. Gotti was right. Gotti was vindicated. Now, now it just makes me feel bad too. And like, remember we had Ray Romano in, and he was just like, "I'm checking the scores when I walk in." Yep. Like, it's just some fucking guy. Ah, uh, it doesn't count for Ray. Ray only had like he, ten reviews on his movie. Yeah, but more than might have been some dude from LA Times getting fifty bucks, like, for to just to just say, "Yeah, I didn't love this movie. I didn't pay those guys." <laughs> Is that your Ray? Yeah. Why? Well, Ah, uh, Debra, Ray, Ray, Ray. Debra. I, I just want to go golf, guys. It's just kind of Kermit. It's kind of hard. It is a very weird. As a, I don't know how you differentiate it too much. You got to get from Kermit to Ray. And it's I, hard. I, I had a friend in high school who do he could do the our middle school do the best Ray. Did a great Ray. He, 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 he'd be the same line too. He'd say, uh, "Debra, I just want to go golfing." It's like something <laughs> like that. Like ma, I used to be able to do Cleveland from Family Guy, but now it feels wrong to do that. I can do oh, that. All, all I can do now is anyway. Joe. The older I guy, I can do Joe Swanson and slash Putty from yeah. Simon. That's all I can do. Um, I can do a really good Dave Chappelle impression. And, <laughs> great. <laughs> the, 
And I wish it was you picked a, a better person too, because I would have almost believed. Like I was like, yeah, give it a shot. Reminds me of uh, the movie uh, Tall Girl, <laughs> where the dorky kid's like, "I do a great Kevin Hart." He's like running around, <laughs> running around the the cafeteria. Yeah. Horrible movie, Tall Bad Girl. Movie. All right, that's it. And Tall Girl too. When, when Tall Girl gets brought up, we got to wrap. Yeah. Uh, that's it for movie news. Uh, as always, subscribe to the channel if you can. That would be a big help. And like the video. Give us a thumbs up. Even if even if you hate these movies, uh, drop below. Uh, is Aquaman 2 going to be an absolute fucking disaster? Mm. You're already typing yes as you hear this. Um, that's <laughs> it. For Gooch and Kenjek, I'm Jeff Lowe. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs>